Right, you um, might have known it was going to happen, but I'm going to try and do something with these export monitors. Um, so if you've watched the previous video, um, you would have seen me look at the cabinets and how bad they are. We've got these brackets on the side that have no matter how good the veneer was we've we've got these with holes through them uh, this is actually the better cabinet um the other one all the molding around the front has broken away i mean this is loose at the top um this woofer is dead the hf 1300 is playing but one of them is playing really quietly compared to the other the diaphragm of this hf 1300 is a different color different type probably older um, they're full of distortion in the measurements and I can hear that when I run the test tones. Um, both of our HF2000 super tweeters are knackered. There's all three drivers in each cabinet absolutely shagged um, and the cabinets themselves are, are mullered. So uh, the guy that sent them to me said or we, we came to the conclusion that there was no point in me wasting his money to post them back to him when really um, all they're going to end up doing is probably going in the bin. So we basically agreed that rather than him pay me anything for what I've done, I'll just keep them. Which really, the only salvageable thing is the crossover. Um, the cabinets, whilst it's not cost effective to do it for a client, um, for me to waste my time on them, and repair them and wrap them is is, is okay um, so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to repair both cabinets fill them sand them uh, build a new piece of molding for the bottom of the other one and then wrap them like I've done with my studio ones and that way we're going to have two good cabinets unfortunately both these Beckstreen woofers are knackered which is a shame because they really are beautiful when they're working so i'm going to install new drivers completely different i'm not going to try and source new woofers the same another hf 1300 for each and the 2000 i'm just going to plonk in new drivers and then we can measure each driver near field um, construct a crossover in xim and then we will build that crossover crudely and then do the measurements like we normally do voice the speaker and basically build something from scratch so i've got an awful lot of drivers that i've dug out of the parts bin and i've laid a few of them out so i'll bring you in closer and we'll talk about the ideas i've got and maybe you guys can chip in and tell me which combination you think would work best in your eyes and uh, yeah we'll we'll build something and see how it turns out I can't call this export monitor part two because it's not going to be an export monitor is it um, but we'll try and be a little bit sympathetic to the design of this uh, lossy cabinet that sort of thing um, make our base unit work in here properly so yeah let's dig in and have a look Right, so these are some of the drivers that I've pulled out that I've kind of shortlisted for this. This woofer is exactly the same, or will fit exactly the same cutout as we've got. Um, polypropylene, nice big motor structure. Uh, I can't remember who it's made by. Um, I think it might be QTX. I might be wrong, but really good um, but I don't think I'd really want to be using it much higher than 800 hertz maybe a kilohertz so this is going to be a base driver I'm not going to allow this or I'm not going to get this to do mid-range as well really so that straight away pushed us into a three-way design what I'm thinking is I have two of these dome mid-ranges which I think I think they're two inch. They might be bigger. Yeah, more like three. These have quite a low FS and I think we can run these down to 750 
750 hertz so you know if we can cross these to that woofer at say 800 that would be really good i do have these mid base drivers i could use um, but really these are four inch they're a bit big really to use with an eight inch um, i'd rather be using this with a with a 10 a couple of tens or something the other thing i thought of is i've got these two inch drivers and i did wonder if i could do something with the original hf 1300 front plate enlarge the cutout and use these behind so it still looks like an hf 1300 to a degree albeit with um, this behind it obviously then we've got to create um, a chamber behind to use this as a mid um, I've got these tweeters that I've used quite a few of and you're going to see those in some other videos that I'm doing and I really like these um, used them in my two ways those little mini monitors I did and these can play down quite low but like I say we're not really doing a two-way so I think this would kind of be wasted um, I've got these tweeters which might sit quite nicely with the dome mid I can get them really close together so you know considering we're probably going to hand off from something like this to the tweeter at 5000 hertz something like that um, our off axis is going to be fantastic if we get these really close together um, but again you know I might be using that we could do something like that but I don't know how good they are but I've got these ribbons and you can pick these up pretty cheap I haven't tested them measured them anything so I really don't know how good they are and whether using something like that is going to be better than that um, yeah I'm not too sure I mean it will go nicely with that which is good uh, I've also found a pair of these 50 mil dome mid-range by Dayton Audio. I mean, similar size to the MD and MF500 Celestian. So at some point in the future, I have got plans to build quite a large floor standing speaker. I've got probably six of the 8-inch woofers that you get in a Ditton 22. So at some point, I'm going to build a floor standing speaker with three woofers probably that mid-range and then a really nice ribbon at the top not that but so yeah I, I don't think I'll be using these in this I think they're a bit big physically um, but yeah that's the that's the plan so maybe we'll have a look at the drivers on the speaker and see how that looks Right, so our big woofer is going to go in here, and that will go in there nicely. No question, that's what I'm using. Um, this, we could take this out, and I can fit this behind on the pillar drill, open up this cutout. Obviously, we won't have the turbo fan grill, as it's called, but we'd keep this kind of original look and I'd probably have a cardboard tube enclosure behind so that would give us our mid-range if we're using this there is enough there's enough meat there to cut this out and drop it in because I'm really I should make a new front baffle but this is here I'm inclined to use it so we could have that in there and in place of our HF 2000s these fit in the same cutout not looking bad is it with that as well look how close they are the acoustic centers are really close hmm This is ply and this is okay. Yeah, okay, let's take these out and have a look. 
Right, so physically, you see this is upside down. That's a perfect fit for our ribbon. The cutout is exactly the same. So whilst I've got to enlarge the cutout in the middle, the rebated section, that will drop straight in there. Definitely using that. Definitely using our woofer. It's just the mid. Um, I think I want to use these dome mid ranges. So if we can drop that in there, because this is rebated, this is going to allow us to overlap our dome mid slightly onto this, keeping them as close as we can. And yeah, we're kind of, the woofer will go behind. I'm not going to front mount that. I'm going to keep it behind. Um, yeah, I think that's going to work. So let me know what you think. So in terms of the crossover, um, I can probably reuse the crossover. Obviously, really only the board. The values are all going to be different um, because we're going to be rolling off our woofer at, I don't know, seven, 800 hertz. And then we're going to be, our mid-range is going to play down to the woofer and play up to the tweeter. So we'll have to roll the top and bottom off. And then our super tweeter is going to play from, depending on what sort of results we get when we near field test these, um, play up beyond this. So yeah, should be interesting, but I expect the board we can probably use. Um, if not, we'll just make a new one. Right, I'm going to take this out and we'll have a look inside as well. the snip. Ouch. Right. So let's just have a look at the cabinet. I don't know if you remember from last time. Can you see that okay? A lot of heat damage had happened. Um, lots of burning. So much polyfill in here I, I don't think that's original. I don't think these were full of this to start with. So, typical bitumen pad, um, lossy BBC style cabinet. So we're going to retain that. Um, get these brackets off the side. And then rewrap the cabinet, but we can build everything on our front baffle and then drop it in. So. That's um, that's pretty cool. Let's move this. Right. Okay. So the crossover we could retain, um, but like I say, these values are all going to change. Um, I think we had a fourth order arrangement on the woofer, which for a three-way design is probably what we're going to end up with. That sort of thing. We had a third order on our Super Tweeter and third on our HF1300, but the HF1300 was allowed to play up as high as it could. Whereas with a mid range, we're going to roll the top off. But given that the dome on this is very, very small, we can probably just roll that off first order slope, something like that, not too aggressive. So integrating this is probably going to be pretty good. Such a shame that these are broken. But yeah, that's the plan. Um, so also by keeping 
reusing this front baffle, it means that we've still got the holes for the original grills, so I can recloth these and reuse these, so we haven't got to make new covers for them or anything. Um, so that's going to help. There's enough cut out here for our new drivers. Um, yeah, so I think that's the plan. So I'll leave that as, I don't know what I'm going to call this video yet, but that's sort of part one to this new three-way we're going to build. Um, and then in the next video, we'll modify the front baffle, get the drivers installed, wires out the port, measure them, and what we'll probably do is rough out a crossover and get them working properly in the original cabinets. Um, the refurbishment of the cabinets would then be the last thing I do. Let's get them sounding good first, but yeah, I think that's the plan. So ribbon at the top, dome mid-range, just got enough room there, and our lovely 8-inch woofer in there. Looks good to me. Right, catch you on part two or part three, whatever you want to call it. I thought you might be interested in this. Um, if you watched my other video, you saw the spider at all heat damaged and broken up in this so I've just taken away the suspension and whoa, look at that that voice coil has been burning um, yeah she cooked right so there we go look at that it's actually melted through the extreme cone man there is no salvage in that you can see in there where that's all burnt away. What is salvageable though, probably is the rubber. That's really good. And the dust caps. And actually someone's contacted me about those. Where do you get them from? So I might be able to help him out because his LS6 twos, LS6 slash twos, um, have similar size, probably the same size woofer, but polypropylene. Anyway, I thought you might like a look at that. All right, cheers guys.